Well, that's odd. I thought we were supposed to be going for a test drive this episode. All in good time, my friends. All in good time. But first, let me take you on a little adventure. As it happens, Pip's already been out for a little test drive off camera. The modifications to the radiator are working beautifully. Water temperature's down, no more overheating. Relocating the oil cooler behind the radiator's also worked. Oil temperatures are now up to something sensible. When I got back from the test drive, I flushed the radiator through again with some radiator cleaner. And straight after I'd done it, there was mayonnaise in the oil again. And here's the culprit, a leaking core plug. It looks like the hole's been gummed up with radiator sludge and corrosion. And then when I've put the radiator cleaner through, it's unblocked the hole and squirted all the water into the cylinder head. Thankfully, this is a really easy fix. All you have to do is tap the core plugs on one side with a punch until they rotate. Then just grab it with a set of pliers, give it a wiggle, and out it comes. I just gave the hole a light clean out with a stainless steel wire wheel before putting the new one in. I used some Hylamar Blue, which is a non-setting liquid sealant around the inside of the hole. I'll drop a link in the description as this stuff's really handy for all sorts of jobs. The hole itself comes about as a byproduct of the manufacturing process for the cylinder head. It's where the supports would be for the core that forms the cavity, i.e. the water jacket, inside the cylinder head, hence the name core plug. You might also hear them referred to as freeze plugs, as they can act like little rupture plates if water happens to freeze inside the engine. And that's it, repair done, simple as that. With the new plug in, I pressure tested the system, took it up to about one bar, which is just below the pressure that the radiator cap opens. Time to start putting it back together. The little VTEC rocker springs go in first. The camshaft lower supports and all the rockers go in next. A good squirt of oil into all of the journals should just help to take the edge off that first restart. Cams next, exhaust first, intake second, and just like in the previous videos, I used those little marks on the front to make sure all the timing was right. Before fitting the top caps, I gave all the bolt holes a good blowout to make sure I wasn't going to hydrolock the bolts down on any residual oil. Give that all a good wipe down. Cleanliness is very important when it comes to rebuilding engines. Then back on with the top caps. They all have both an arrow and a number to make sure that they go back on in the correct place and in the correct orientation. And just like before, all the bolts have to be done up in the correct sequence to make sure you get a nice even clamping force on the cams. Then the rocker cover can go on. Get the wiring harness roughly laid in next. Then connect up the coil packs and get those pushed in. I'd better connect up the cam sensors as well, they're fairly important. Ooh, I must be feeling confident the top cover's going back on. While the car's up on jacks, I thought I'd just do a couple of other quick jobs as well. The first of which is to just top up the oil in the diff. It's a Sierra 7 inch diff and it leaks like a sieve. I find it's easiest to take the breather pipe out, put a funnel in the hole, pour the oil in the funnel and then it's full when the oil comes out of the hole in the back of the diff. There we go, close enough for government work. Next, I'd like to sort out this exhaust bracket. I started by removing the old bracket. It's just held on with a couple of pop rivets. A swift tap with the persuading stick and off it came. I'm going to make a new bracket that pokes through the bodywork and is welded to the chassis on the inside. So to do that, I first needed to remove the seat. I drilled a couple of pilot holes through the bodywork using a small right angled air drill. Then joined the holes together using an angle grinder with a slitting disc to make a slot. A couple of small files made light work of the aluminium bodywork getting it to final size. The new bracket is just a bit of 5mm thick 304 stainless flat bar with the end rounded and an 8mm hole drilled in it. I removed the paint from the chassis, coated it with a zinc rich weld through primer and then welded the new bracket in place with a 309 filler rod. 309 is for welding stainless to mild steel and dissimilar steels. Hmm, 
Not bad for left-handed. I made a little fascia plate, again from 304 stainless, just to cover the old rivet holes and tidy up around the hole for the new bracket. The skin pins did a lovely job of holding everything in place while I drilled for the new rivet holes. All of the holes were thoroughly deburred. Then all of the holes got a light coating of EB25 sealant. A friend introduced me to this stuff on a job a few weeks ago and I'm really impressed with it. I'll drop a link in the description. With the fascia in place, I put the rivets in and then popped them down. I think that looks a lot nicer than the old one. Should be a fair bit stronger too. Let me know what you think in the comments. I just used a rag with a bit of solvent on it to get rid of any leftover sealant that got squeezed out while doing the rivets up. The tailpipe of the exhaust will be supported on this little rubber mount. It's just secured in place with a washer, a spring washer and a nut on the bottom. And then the little fascia plate will also act as a little bash guard to help protect the bodywork. I also made a new bracket to weld onto the tailpipe of the exhaust. It's just a piece of cut down stainless steel box section with the end rounded and again an 8mm hole drilled to go on the other side of the rubber mount. Finally, I've managed to get a decent arc shot for you guys. This is the tailpipe bracket being welded onto the tailpipe. I'm using a 2% lanthanated tungsten ground to a sharp point at about 100 amps with a foot pedal so I can wind it up and down a little bit if I need to and a 316 filler. The tailpipe fits nicely on its new mountings and just like on the bottom it's secured with a washer, a spring washer and a nut. It's time for you to go back on the floor where you belong Pip. You know what, with all that done, I think it's time we go for a test drive. My apologies for the shaky camera and the poor audio, I'll try and sort out a camera bracket and some better quality audio in a future video.